Hey everyone, this lesson is on psoriasis. So this will be an introductory and an overview lesson of different types of psoriasis, the management signs and symptoms and treatment of psoriasis. So psoriasis is a chronic inflammatory skin condition with well demarcated erythematous plaques that have a characteristic silver scale. So what does this mean? So if we were to take a kind of a closer view of a psoriasis plaque, it is well demarcated, which means it has a clear border. So it goes very much from a red to normal skin tone. So it's got a well-defined border. It's red, so it's erythematous. It has a silver scale. So if we take a look here, we can see these little scale-like portions of the plaque. That's what we call the silver scale. And it is a plaque, which means it is a raised skin lesion that is greater than one centimeter. The onset of psoriasis can occur at any age, but there are generally two peaks or two times in a person's life where they are at higher risk for onset of psoriasis. These include between ages 30 to 39 and 50 to 69. Now there are a wide variety of risk factors and triggers for psoriasis. One of the major ones is a family history or a genetic component. There are several genes that have been implicated in psoriasis. One of them has to do with the psoriasis susceptibility 1 locus on the major histocompatibility complex gene on chromosome 6P21, so the SOAR-S1 locus. Other ones include the HLA CW6, which seems to be related more to an early onset type of psoriasis. There are other genes that have also been implicated, um, specific interleukin genes like IL-12, IL-23, but these are some of the major ones here. Another risk factor for psoriasis is smoking. Heavy alcohol consumption is also related to a onset or a triggering or worsening of the psoriasis condition. Obesity is also a risk factor, as well as certain medications. Medications include beta blockers, lithium, and chloroquine, so some other anti-malarial medications as well. And some infections have also been shown to trigger psoriasis or to um, be involved in worsening of the psoriasis condition. These include having an acute streptococcal infection, so a post-streptococcal um, period, you ha are at a higher risk for developing a certain type of psoriasis, we'll talk a little bit later about, and also having HIV. So we're going to talk about six different types of psoriasis. The first one we're going to talk about is plaque psoriasis, and plaque psoriasis is the most common type of psoriasis. It has a symmetrical distribution. If you see it on in one area on one arm, you'll generally see it on the same area on the other arm. It's the most common places where plaque psoriasis occurs include the scalp, the knees, extensor surfaces of the elbows, and the gluteal cleft. This condition is generally worse in winter. It's due to the dryness of the air, lack of sunlight, those types of things can worsen this condition. And it has what we call the auspitz sign. The auspitz sign is when a little bit of the, the silver scale is removed, there's some minute bleeding. That's what the auspitz sign is. So plaque psoriasis, very easy to remember. It's the most common. The most common you'll see in practice. It is generally a the classic um, or erythematous, well demarcated plaque with a silver scale. The next condition we're going to talk about is the guttate psoriasis, the drop-like psoriasis, the very small acute eruptions of uh, smaller sized plaques uh, preceded by generally a streptococcal infection. Again, these lesions are generally less than one centimeter in diameter. And it generally occurs on the trunk and the proximal extremities. So, so a way to remember gut tate psoriasis, this may be a funny way to remember it, but it might help you. Think about falling into a gutter. So if you're to fall into a gutter, you're generally going to fall onto your trunk or your arm. And think about if there's water in the gutter, you fall into the gutter, it's going to splash up onto you. You're going to get droplets of water on you. And that's generally how it presents, little droplets of skin lesions, those uh, 
little uh, lesions less than one centimeter in diameter. So hopefully that helps you remember it. Another type of psoriasis is the pustular psoriasis. The pustular psoriasis is a possibly life-threatening type of psoriasis. It generally has a sudden onset and is associated with leukocytosis, malaise, fever, hypocalcemia, and it's got a couple different triggers. Interestingly, it has it can be triggered by pregnancy, and it can also be triggered by a withdrawal of oral glucocorticoids. So if someone's taking glucocorticoids, they remove them, you're going to have this possible eruption of a pustular psoriasis. And it's this one's an easy to remember. It basically presents as uh, many pustules. The next condition is erythrodermic psoriasis. Erythrodermic psoriasis is a head-to-toe generalized erythema. It generally can affect basically 90% uh, or greater body surface area. So you can think you're going to basically be, again, head-to-toe erythema. And with this one, you got to worry about issues with sepsis, with fluid loss due to issues with barrier protection. So if you've got generalized, if if 90% or more of your body surface area is affected by an erythrodermic psoriasis, you're going to have issues with insensible water loss. Uh, you're, you could have issues with um, infection risk. So you have a higher risk for sepsis. We also get a desquamative scale. So when it, the reddening, you get this scaling appearance, like very dry skin. And again, this also worsens the risk for infection. So in order to remember erythrodermic psoriasis, it's actually in its name. Erythro is red, dermic is skin. Erythrodermic, you're going to have a reddened skin. This is erythrodermic psoriasis. The next one is inverse psoriasis. Inverse psoriasis. It occurs in skin folds and it has no visible scaling. It's called inverse psoriasis because it basically is an inverse or an opposite of our normal plaque psoriasis. It doesn't have a silver scale and it generally occurs in skin folds unlike the other plaque psoriasis where it can occur on extensor surfaces. So with this one you can remember it by thinking inverse in skin folds. So or it's just the opposite, it's an inverse of the plaque psoriasis. The next condition is nail psoriasis. The condition is in its name, it affects the nail. It has pitting of the nail. If you see a skin condition, something with psoriasis, with pitting of the nail, that is psoriasis. It can proceed or proceed other forms of psoriasis. So you might have pitting of the nail, but they might not have any other uh, skin manifestations of psoriasis and then eventually they get them, or they can have the maybe a plaque psoriasis and then develop pitting of the nail. It also has associations with psoriatic arthritis. So if you see a patient with arthritic joint symptoms and they also have pitting of the nail, most likely they have psoriatic arthritis. So what are some of the treatments for psoriasis? It depends on if the condition is a limited or a severe or systemic condition. So if it's a limited disease, so very small area, we generally use topical treatments, topical corticosteroids, topical emollients, you could use calcitriol or topical retinoids. So again, if it's limited, if there's very little surface area involved, we use topical. If it's a severe condition, if much of the body is being affected, or much of the body surface area is being affected, we use systemic. So severe, systemic. S for S. So systemic, you want to think about phototherapy. Retinoids, you could think of methotrexate as a possible treatment. And even further down the line, unlikely to be used, but in possible cases where none of these prior treatments have worked, we might want to use biologics. So again, phototherapy, retinoids, methotrexate, and then way, way down the line, maybe use biologics if nothing else works. So if you want to learn more about other skin conditions, check out my dermatology playlist. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time.